Okay, so thank you. Um, okay. So, can the first person, uh, which is Afrina, can you do question number one, read the question, uh, answer and explain a bit. The respiratory membrane is influenced by the following factors except D, types of respiratory surface, because it is not related to the formula of rate of diffusion. Fixed law of diffusion, can okay. fixed law of uh, diffusion. Okay, so so if you uh, if you look at this, okay, the the rate of diffusion across respiratory membrane is influenced by the flow following. So it is uh, applies at a point. It follows the fixed law of of diffusion. So distance of diffusion, uh, d small d, increase or decrease to to uh, increase rate of diffusion. It should be decrease okay short distance and uh, short distance so the the wall of alveolus and also the wall of blood capillaries they are one cell thick so this shorten the distance for gases to diffuse through and increase the rate of uh, respiration and then b surface area uh, to volume ratio which is in the formula it is a so all respiratory surface that like gas the gills ke ataupun lungs ke lungs ke ataupun tracheal system uh, so, uh, all this respiratory surface has to have high uh, surface area, large surface area okay, to, re uh, to increase rate of diffusion. And then difference in partial pressure, obviously, can okay, delta P in the formula too. Okay. So, the, the partial pressure has to also uh, increase or large. Okay. So, perbezaan partial pressure, for example, between... Uh, the atmosphere and inside the lung, the, uh, the atmosphere is 159, we looked at yesterday, compared to the uh, in the lung, which is 105. So, there's a difference in partial pressure. So, the air from outside can uh, can enter into the lung. So, same goes to the partial pressure uh, in the lung, which is 105, versus the blood capillary surrounding the alveolus. So, the, uh, the partial pressure of oxygen is 100. Again. So, 105 versus 100, so oxygen from the alveolus can diffuse through, uh, through and enter into the blood capillaries. Okay, so, so there must be a difference in the partial pressure, okay, the partial pressure of oxygen and also the partial pressure of carbon uh, dioxide. Okay, types of respiratory surface, it doesn't has to do, uh, it, it, it is not related to the influence, influencing the rate of diffusion. So, about small point, gills, ke, sorry, gills, ke, lungs, ke, um, upper or the skin, so uh, all 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 of these uh, respiratory surfaces uh, will have same characteristics that contributes to uh, to the ability of this respiratory surface to increase the rate of diffusion. Okay, so thank you, uh, Afrina. So number two, Muiz, Muizuddin. Which of the following protein components is responsible for oxygen transportation? I say C, hemoglobin. So what is hemoglobin? Huh? Hemoglobin uh, consists of comprise of four polypeptides, where each of the polypeptides comprise iron atom at the center that allow to bind to oxygen. So one hemoglobin can bind to how many oxygen molecules? Four oxygen oh, molecules. Okay. For oxygen molecule. So one red blood cell can carry how many oxygen molecule? Four. Four ke? One red blood cell? Okay. Red cell ada banyak hemoglobin. Ah, again. So <laughs> inside, ah, again. So inside, inside one red blood cell, there's millions, okay, of hemoglobins. There's, bukan millions, one, two hundred and... 50,000 tak silap. Okay, oh, you, uh, tak apa. So, there's there's a lot of hemoglobin inside uh, of one red blood cell. So, therefore, one red blood cell can carry millions of uh, oxygen, oxygen molecule. Okay. So, hemoglobin, it has four subunit, consists of four polypeptide. And each of the subunit has a hem group. And each, uh, in each hem group has, a, has, a, has an iron atom of ferrum to bind to the oxygen molecule. Okay. So thank you, Muiz. Number three, uh, Aisha Amira. Number three, what do alveoli of mammalian 
mammalian lungs and the tracheal tube of insects have in common? Uh, my answer is C. Use a closed secretory system to transport gases. Okay, are you sure this one? The answer is C. I think it's all soalan ni. Uh, what do alveoli of mammalian lungs? Okay, kita tahu mammalian lung, lungs use op, uh, closed circulatory system. Tapi insect, does it use closed circulatory system? Yang ni kita tengok masa uh, chapter circulate, uh, circulatory system kan? So insect, does it use closed circulatory system? Ah, kan? So, dia ada apa? Uh, dia ada uh, tubular hearts kan? For inside, they have tubular hearts that pumps um, apa the blood into body cavity. So, dia ada hemolymph kan? Uh, sorry. Hemolymph ah, kan? Hemolymph. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so, so jawapan C, it cannot uh, be applied lah sebab, sebab insects does not use uh, close. Dia, dia adalah open circulatory system. So, kalau kita tengok A, does it apply to uh, to both? Tak, dia, dia counter current is for gills, for fish, can for fish or aquatic organism. Kalau A, a large moist surface area for gas exchange. Can that be the answer? Apa, apa persamaan? Antara semua respiratory surface tak kisahlah dia gills ke, dia uh, tracheal tubes of insects ke, dia uh, lungs ke, dia skin ke. Apa, what is the characteristics of all this uh, respiratory surface? They must be, apa? Aisha? I'm not sure what to Characteristics of respiratory surface? Uh, can, high surface area? Ha, can large large surface area kan kalau macam alveolus uh, in the lung ada banyak alveolus that is that is highly folded okay and then uh, it is surrounded by many blood capillaries so uh, sama juga dengan gills dia ada banyak lamella kan so so then uh, sama juga dengan uh, tracheal uh, system in insects dia ada banyak branching of uh, uh, apa um um tracheal tubes tu kan ha so so dia dia kena ada large surface area and then it must be moist saya dah cakap kan so all the respiratory surface must be moist to allow respiratory gases uh, to dissolve and then diffuse okay ha? so the answer should be b okay ha? so kalau a untuk gills kalau c only applies for uh, for lungs for for mammals and then respiratory surface that are in foldings of body body walls ni um if you look at your notes, can dia dia explains on the structure of gills. Kalau kalau kita boleh apply lah kan, moist moist thin structure that extend from body surface. Kan so infolding of of uh, of body surface lah. Okay so surface body body walls. Lah. So this may apply to gills. Okay. Uh, so the answer should be B. Okay. So thank you, Amira. Uh, next, number four, Aisha. The rate of breathing increases when uh, the adrenal, adrenal medulla release epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, you need, uh, where did you find the answer for number four, ni? Aisha? Is it in rest, uh, in uh, in chapter eight punya uh, slide? Rate of breathing increases when adrenal medulla releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Dalam chapter eight ke kita belajar ni? Ini soalan ni sebenarnya uh, dia ada kat chapter uh, hormonal and uh, nervous communication. Okay. So awak tengok yang bahagian renal uh, adrenal medulla tu. So uh, it releases these two hormone epinephrine to, uh, and also no epinephrine 
uh, dalam um, apa fight and flight um, uh, apa uh, condition tu kan uh. so so this two this two hormone will be released to increase um, rate of breath, uh, breathing so that more oxygen can be uh, can enter into your body can to support high metabolic rate lah when you are uh, in in the state of shock for example okay uh, boleh ya Syah, faham? Okay, so nombor lima, nombor five, Amira, Nadira. Which of the following cells is responsible in secreting mucus in resp uh, respiratory system? C, goblet cell. Goblet cell secrete mucus. What is the function of the mucus? What is the function of the mucus? Ini bukan kita tengok kat chapter uh, 8 je. Kita dah tengok uh, dalam chapter immune system. Kan? So the goblet cells that are found in the uh, respiratory uh, airways. Kan? The trachea for example. They they have goblet cells to produce mucus. And it is uh, the, the, the lining of the trachea is also. Um, uh, there is presence of cilia also. So the the function of the mucus is to what is to trap uh, contaminants okay with the air that you breathe in such as for example pathogen or other pollutants so the mucus will trap all these contaminants uh, and then the 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 function of having cilia inside your trachea is to swipe the combination of the mucus with with all these uh, contaminants upward so that it can be swallowed uh, in your in your esophagus to be digested and destroyed in the stomach using stomach acid okay so um so that is for question number five so number six uh tadi amira hai. so next number six uh aprilin number six the cilia that line the bronchi are used to mm, my answer is d move dirt out of respiratory system yeah so number so yang soalan nombor uh, lima ni, so dia terus relate dengan so, uh, soalan nombor enam kan. So cilia that is present in the in your respiratory system is to move dirt out. Nah, tadi with the combination of um, mucus secreted by the goblet cell tadi. Okay. So thank you, uh, Aprilin. And then number number seven, Ayu Zahira. Which of the following causes oxygen release from hemoglobin? My answer is A, decrease in blood pH. Uh, B is wrong because it should be CO2 level increase. C is wrong because uh, it promotes attachment, oxygen and hemoglobin. Uh, D is wrong because, um, it, because it, reduce, uh, it reduce the carbonic acid. Kalau, kalau kita tengok uh, all these choices of answers, yang paling tepat adalah A lah kan. So, uh, which of the following causes oxygen release from hemoglobin? So, this one, bahagian mana dalam uh, punya notes ni can we refer to? We have to refer to the, your understanding on oxygen uh, hemoglobin dissociation curve kan. So, um, so decrease in blood pH indicating what? The blood is acidic. Okay, the blood, uh, the blood is acidic. Okay, SED. Why is it acidic? Because there's formation of hydrogen ion. Kenapa ada formation of hydrogen ion? Sebab ada tindak balas antara carbon dioxide and also uh, water. Kan? So, carbon dioxide and also water which is catalyzed uh, by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase ni kan? to produce carbonic acid. So, the carbonic acid CH2CO3 ni will uh, will dissociate to form hydrogen uh, hydrogen ion and also bicarbonate ion. Can CHCO3 uh, minus. Uh, can. So, so when you when your cell is respiring, uh, uh, has high metabolic rate or undergoing high cellular respiration, so it produces more carbon dioxide causing more production of hydrogen ion. So, hydrogen ion causes the blood to be acidic, uh, blood pH decrease and so therefore, uh, the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin that carries oxygen, has
has to release more oxygen to the body cell. Okay, more oxygen to body cell sebab apa sel awak tengah respiring so much kan. So, uh, through cellular respiration, you tahu cellular respiration uh, requires oxygen. So, more oxygen has to be released. Okay, more oxygen has to be re released from hemoglobin. Ataupun kat sini hemoglobin has lower affinity for oxygen. Lower affinity for oxygen maksudnya hemoglobin will release more oxygen okay, to the respiring cell when your cell produces more carbon dioxide. Contohnya masa masa bila? Masa exercising for example. Okay. So faham eh? So yang ini awak kena fahamkan on uh, uh, oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve which leads to question number 8. So number 8, uh, siapa? Intan. Figure 1 shows oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves at pH 7.2 and pH 7.4. Which of the following is true that at partial pressure oxygen less than 40 mm mercury? My answer is A. Hemoglobin retain less oxygen at pH 7.4 compared to at pH 7.2. Why do you answer E? Okay. Uh, pH 7.2 is lower than normal. So it needs more oxygen to bring it back to normal set point. Okay, awak tengok eh. Tak, uh, graph ni adalah oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Dia nak menunjukkan, dia adalah satu graph yang menunjukkan the affinity for uh, the affinity of hemoglobin to bind to oxygen at different parts of the body which uh, yang paling obvious uh, dia nak concentrate pada lungs kan lungs kat sini dan for example yang dekat sini lah kot pressure pressure okay, what sini lah okay, 100 lah let's say okay so in the lungs so lungs and also other body tissues, okay, other body tissues uh, during rest and also exercise, okay. So, uh, kalau, what is the normal set point? Normal set point of blood pH. Is it 7.2 or 7.4? Normal set point for blood pH. Seven point two. Are you sure? Ini kita tengok daripada homeostasis lagi chapter tiga. What is the normal set point of blood pH? Seven point four. Ah, seven point four. So, if your blood pH drops to 7.2, it means that Apa? Yang ni, explanation yang atas ni saya dah explain tadi Kenapa ada drop in the pH? Walaupun ada high, high Carbon dioxide level High carbon dioxide level Sebab dia akan release Atau produce more hydrogen ion kan daripada tindak balas yang saya show tadi tu. Kan? So, it shows that your body is respiring. Okay? Your cell is respiring. Your cell needs more oxygen. So, the hemoglobin has to release more oxygen. The hemoglobin has less affinity to bind to oxygen and release more oxygen to your body cells. Okay? To your body cell. So, if you look at the, uh, the answer for A, Hemoglobin retain less oxygen at pH 7.4 compared to 7.2. 7.2 release more hydrogen ion because more carbon dioxide is produced. Should the hemoglobin release? Um, retain maksudnya apa? Retain less. less. Maksudnya dia, 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 dia has high affinity kan? High affinity for oxygen. Should that be the case? Tak kan? So, hemoglobin will uh, retain more oxygen should be. Okay, more oxygen at pH 7.4 compared to 7.2. Sebab 7.2 will retain less lah. Sebab less, less affinity for oxygen. Um, more oxygen should be released. So, jawapan dia tak lah. 
Okay, so kalau B hemoglobin retain less at uh, less oxygen at seven point two, this one should be the answer. Can okay. compared to seven point four, retain less. Maksudnya hemoglobin has less affinity to oxygen. Hemoglobin has less affinity uh, to bind to oxygen and release more oxygen. Release more oxygen to your body cells. Okay, when the pH drops, indicating the carbon dioxide level increase. Faham? Siapa yang tak faham? Ha. Ada yang tak faham? Sebab ini soalan ni, you need to understand on this graph. Siapa yang tak faham, tolong bagi tahu. Kita boleh tengok balik on on this graph. Saya assume semua faham ya eh? kalau tak ada siapa yang tak nak tanya pasal graph ni. Ada yang perlu penjelasan lebih untuk graph ni? I hope you understand on this graph. Boleh? Boleh, madam. Okay. Okay, kalau kita tengok see, the release of uh, oxygen from hemoglobin is not influenced by the production of carbon dioxide. Salah lah. The release, of hemo, uh, the release of oxygen from hemoglobin is influenced by the production of carbon dioxide. So, if more carbon dioxide released, your body is respi uh, your cell body is respiring more, producing more carbon dioxide. So, hemoglobin has less affinity for oxygen and release more oxygen to the cell. Okay, so oxygen, so that this uh, oxygen can be used by your body cell. Okay. So yeah, kalau D at pH 7 where, uh, where carbon dioxide production is less uh, than 7.4, hemoglobin releases. Ini salah lah kan? At 7.4 where carbon dioxide production is more. Kan? More. Sebab apa? It, it becomes more acidic lah walaupun 7 point, oh cakap tak lah, tak significant sangat pun kan? Tapi it is significant to your body. Okay? So, uh, release more, more carbon dioxide. Compared to 7.4. So, hemoglobin releases more lah oxygen. Okay. Sepatutnya. Okay. So, number 9. So, thank you tadi uh, Intan. Number 9. Ishraf. Boleh Ishraf? Okay, kita back to Ishraf nanti. Maybe awak ada problem with your mic. So, no, number na. Ha, nanti, cuba betulkan dulu nanti kita get back. Uh, okay, Ishraf. Jawab awak B. Okay. How is uh, carbon dioxide mostly transported in, in the body? It is in the form of bicarbonate ion. Okay. Berapa persen Ishraf sebuah otak kalau bicarbonate ion? What is the percentage of carbon dioxide in the form of uh, bicarbonate ion? Okay, 72, 70 plus percent, 72 percent. Kalau dah menurut awak lah. Okay, 72 uh, percent. It's in the form of bicarbonate ion lah daripada reaction apa tadi? Yang daripada reaction ni. Tadi kan, carbon dioxide reacts with water, catalyzes by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, forming uh, carbonic acid. The carbonic acid will split into bicarbonate ion and uh, hydrogen ion. Okay. So, in the form of carbon dioxide and this one here is in the form of dissolved carbon dioxide lah kan. Which is the percentage is around 7 to 10%. So, it, that is not paling tinggi lah. And then dissolved in the uh, in the plasma membrane as carbonic acid. Ini tak sebab carbonic acid has to split uh, and become carbonic, sorry, bicarbonate ion and also hydrogen ion. And then D binds to hemoglobin forming carbon amino hemoglobin ni 20%. Okay, of the carbon dioxide. Okay, 
So ini percentage ni awak kena ingat ya. So mana yang paling banyak, mana uh, kabar minum hemoglobin 20% kan dissolve carbon dioxide is 10 to 7 to 10%. Okay. So uh, thank you Ishraf. Next number 10, Julia. Choose characteristics of organism that use skin as their gas exchange organ. My answer is C, 1, 3 and 4. 1, 3 and 4. Uh, kalau tengok kat sini, what can you give us an example of organism that uses skin as organ of ex, uh, gas exchange? Ah, uh, worms. Worms. Ada lagi tak? Selain worms, worms kita tahu, tahu dia tak ada lungs kan? So that's why awak jawab C. What other organism apart from worms that uses skin? For gas exchange. Frogs. Frog ada lang tak? The cattle may have lungs. Frogs ada lang kan? Okay, so the answer should be D. Uh, so be careful eh. Tengok betul-betul apa your notes. Okay. So choose characteristics of organism that uses skin as the uh, gas of exchange. Uh, so small body size. Okay. So frogs, worms, they have small body size. May have lungs. So they check out have lungs, can may have lungs. So uh, that applies for frogs. Live in moist Places are both live in moist places. Have dense capillary beneath the skin are yeah, betul. Okay, so the answer should be D. Okay, so thank you, Julia. And then uh, number 11, Fahrul. Most carbon dioxide transported to the lung uh, is in the form of C, bicarbonate ion. Yeah, tadi berapa? 72%. Okay, uh, so... Carbon minum hemoglobin 20. Can dissolve in blood plasma 7 to 10%. Carbonic acid tak sebab dia akan split. Jadi bicarbonate ion dan juga hydrogen ion. The reaction, okay, the reaction that involves uh, carbon dioxide uh, reacting with uh, with water forming carbonic, uh, carbonic acid kan. Uh, jadi bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion occurs where? Berlaku kat mana? It occurs where? Ini reaction ni kan ya. Reaction yang menghasilkan bicarbonate ion daripada carbonic acid semua tu berlaku dekat mana? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin ke? In the red blood cell. Okay, awak tengok dalam opening nota tu kan. So, uh, carbon dioxide enters into red blood cells uh, to uh, the, and this reaction occurs kan. So, it occurs in the in the red blood cell. So, the, the hydrogen ion forms are combined dengan uh, hemoglobin in the red blood cell. Okay. Okay, so next, um, Farid, number 12. Which of the following is correct about the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve? My answer is D. Shows percentage of oxygen saturation of hemoglobin at different partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, so betul lah. So, you nak kena fahamkan ya, again, you must understand on this concept of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Kalau kita tengok apa yang structure question, tak ada eh, soalan on, oh, ada soalan lah, ada soalan kat belakang. So, so kalau kalau tengok kat sini, so dia akan keluar dekat objektif, tak keluar objektif, dia keluar kat structure kan. So, you must understand on the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, okay. Kalau kita tengok kat sini, the, the y-axis on the graph shows partial pressure, salah lah. Kan, it is uh, percentage of oxygen kan, uh, uh, oxygen oxygen saturation. Okay, uh, hemoglobin oxygen saturation lah, percentage lah of, of oxygen saturation uh, apa, uh, by the hemoglobin. So, so y tu adalah oxygen saturation. So, kalau uh, B, hemoglobin dissociation curve move towards the right, 
towards the right pH uh, increases. Salah kan? Kalau dia move towards the right, is due to pH decrease. Sebab apa hydrogen ion increase? Sebab apa uh, carbon dioxide produce more? Kan? Uh, so, move to the right is when your body produces more carbon dioxide, your your blood becoming acidic. Kan? So, ini yang kita namakan sebagai bore shift. Kan? Bore shift tu. Okay? So, the x-axis on the graph shows percentage of oxygen saturation. Uh, so, A dengan C ni dia terbalik. Kan? So, kalau x x tu, uh, y, x axis adalah it shows partial pressure of oxygen. So, facts dia terbalik lah untuk A dengan C ni. Okay. So, the answer should be D. Okay. So, thank you Farid. Uh, Farid, number 13. Hadith. Number 13. Boys law state that my answer is A. Pressure decrease when the volume of a given quantity of gas increase. Pressure decrease when volume increase. Okay, so ini masa apply during respiration when, for example, when you are inhaling lah kan. So you inhale, your lung expand, thoracic, uh, thoracic cavity expand so that the pressure inside the lung will be lowered so that uh, outside where you have high pressure, so the, the air can be can be forced into into the lung. So this is what we call it as negative pressure breathing lah. Okay. So uh, boys law. Okay. Okay so Hadith. Thank you. Uh, number 14. Hazik. Identify the enzyme involved in the reaction given below. My answer is carbonic anhydrase. Okay carbonic anhydrase. So Carbonic anhydrase, it catalyzes the reaction. Ini. Tapi kalau dia boleh tak reverse reaction? Boleh. Okay, kalau kita tengok kat, uh, kat uh, formula ni kan. Uh, chemical equation ni. Water plus carbon dioxide uh, forming carbonic acid that split into into bicarbonate ion and also hydrogen ion kan. So, this reaction occurs dekat bahagian mana? The forward reaction tu. Producing carbon dioxide is your body cells. Tissue cells. Okay, so, ini berlaku masa cell producing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide diffuse into the blood. So, this reaction occurs. As the blood travels uh, uh, along your circulatory system and reaches the lungs, okay, the lungs, bila dah sampai kat lung, baru the reverse reaction occurs. Okay, the reverse reaction uh, is also catalyzed by the carbonic anhydrase. Reverse reaction, bila dah reach the lung, the uh, the the hydrogen ion ni, which binds to the hemoglobin, will be released and then uh, bicarbonate ion yang yang travel in your blood plasma akan masuk balik dalam red blood cells so dia akan bergabung balik jadi carbonic carbonic acid and then the the the, the this carbon acid will, will be converted back to hydro, uh, water and also carbon dioxide with using the same enzyme okay so that the carbon dioxide can can uh, can diffuse out of the blood capillaries enters into the alveolus to be exhaled out to be removed uh, so both both a uh, ways of chemical reaction is is uh, is catalyzed by carbonic acid forward forward reaction kan uh, berlaku dekat uh, body the body tissue the reverse reaction berlaku dekat lungs okay huh? blood capillaries in the lungs okay so uh, hazik thank you and then next uh, number 15 the last objective here fine Okay, kalau tengok kat soalan ni, before we proceed, soalan nombor 15 ni, uh, dia terkopi soalan yang sama dengan soalan 14 ni. Okay, basically soalan ni dia nak tanya on uh, the sequence of um, breathing, breathing process, breathing, uh, be, con, uh, control of breathing. Ha, kan? Control of breathing, dia nak tanya awak sequence of uh, control of breathing tu. So, jawapan apa? Irfan. Uh, for question 15, my answer is C. The first is partial pressure of carbon dioxide and concentration of hydrogen ion increases. 
and then uh, the peripheral tumor receptors are stimulated and then uh, impulse is sent to the respiratory center in the medulla oblongata and lastly our breathing rate increases okay chemo receptor ni kita ada berapa jenis kita ada dua kan peripheral chemo receptor which is located ada dua tempat which is um at the aortic body uh, in the aorta and then carotid body in the carotid artery ada dua tempat so this peripheral chemo receptor dia akan detect carbon dioxide concentration and also hydrogen ion concentration Baik besar untuk lagi satu jenis uh, chemo receptor which is which is apa? Lagi satu. Central chemo receptor. Ah, kan. So can central chemo receptor. So can central chemo receptor only detects hydrogen ion concentration. Kan. So if carbon dioxide concentration increase melalui tindak balas ni, hydrogen ion also increases, the hydrogen ion akan masuk dalam apa? cerebrospinal fluid. Kan. Ah, so So this will be detected by the uh, by the uh, central chemo receptor. So respirate and then send send us impulse uh, to the respiratory center in the in the medulla oblongata in, in your in your brain lah to interpret the corrective um, um, response. Okay. Okay. So itu akan kita lah ada dua peripheral and also central. Peripheral detect carbon and also hydrogen ion concentration. Tapi kalau kalau uh, central hanya detect hydrogen ion concentration. So, you have to know the difference. Okay. So, thank you, uh, Irfan. Okay. So, now we are going to move on to the next part. Part B, structured question. Uh, so, kita pergi kepada next person which is Nabil. the letter in the diagram to indicate the part involved in gas exchange answer D D apa? what is Abulis. D? Abulis. ok awak tengok ya soalan ni betul-betul the question ask you make sure ini saya nak emphasize on the method of answering question if the question ask you to circle then you circle if you were to write the answer like for example here you write uh, alveolus Jawapan awak betul but you are not answering according to what the question wants. So, your answer might be wrong. Dia akan ditanda sebagai salah. Okay. So, make sure. Ini soalan ni setengah je straightforward kan. Tapi kalau you carelessly answer the question, awak boleh lose markah macam tu je. Okay. So, make sure you 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 circle lah. If the question ask you uh, to circle. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok C ni. C is what? Kita label semua semua uh, diagram ni. So, C is pulmonary artery ke vein? What is C? Pulmonary. Dia pergi uh, dia pergi ke arah alveolus. So, it means that it carries oxygen poor blood. Oxygen poor blood is coming from the heart. Okay. So, from the heart, it must be through pulmonary apa? Pulmonary artery. Okay, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery coming from the blood, uh, coming from the heart, it carries oxygen poor blood. So, kalau A ni adalah pulmonary uh, vein. Okay, so pulmonary vein, uh, kalau tengok arrow dia, daripada lung pergi ke mana? Pergi ke heart semula. So, this one it carries oxygen rich blood. Sebab dah apa? Dah ada berlaku gas exchange lah in the alveolus. Okay, oxygen rich blood. Okay, so kalau B tu adalah uh, terminal bronchioles. Okay, B is terminal bronchioles. Okay, bronchioles. Okay, so uh, number two. Use uh, Shafiq. Hmm. State the function of goblet cell in the inner lining of trachea and bronchi. My answer is to produce mucus to trap the dirt or any pathogen that enter the respiratory airways. Okay. Uh, Boleh lah. Uh, ada perkataan mucus so is the key point. Tapi um, uh, you must sebab goblet cell ni dia produce and secret. Uh, so you must write the word secret tu. Baru baru lagi tepat lah. Secret. Okay. 
goblet cell produce and secrete mucus to trap contaminants lah kan apa apa, apa a particle dust pathogen whatever that that enters into the lung with the air that you breathe in okay so secrete mucus okay and then uh okay thank you shafiq uh next b uh nakib Mount Everest climbers requires an oxygen tank because it is hard to breathe at higher altitude. Explain the reason for this. My answer is at higher altitudes with low percentage of oxygen, the atmosphere pressure is lower than the pressure in the lungs. This reduce in partial pressure of oxygen prevent oxygen from entering the lungs. Yeah, so so the key point kat situ kan, partial pressure of oxygen decrease at higher altitude. So when partial pressure of oxygen decrease, so therefore this prevents oxygen from entering into the lung. Kind of. So, uh, betul lah. Okay, your, your answer is correct lah, Kip. Okay, so ada, ada dua point. So at higher altitude, the the atmospheric pressure is 380. Okay, 380 millimeter mercury. So, um, oxygen percentage is 20 point. 20.95% Okay, 20. Oh, belajar kat sekolah dia dah bundakan jadi 21% kan So, kalikanlah So, you get the ox, the partial pressure of oxygen which is around 80 So, the partial pressure of uh, of oxygen at higher altitude which is around 80 mm mercury is lower compared to the partial pressure in your in your lungs Okay, so in your lung it is 110 So, this will be harder for the oxygen from the outside to enter into your into your lung so prevent prevent oxygen from entering into the lung you you uh, you get one point okay huh? so dua markah lah partial pressure oxygen decrease prevent oxygen from entering into the lung ataupun uh, instead of uh, partial pressure of oxygen uh, decrease yang macam tadi uh, Nakib mention lower concentration of oxygen uh, so pun boleh juga okay Okay, so thank you, Nakib. Next, uh, C. Uh, Nick Nufara. What is the relationship between the increased need for oxygen during exercise and the breathing rate? The higher, the higher, the higher need for oxygen during exercise and the higher the breathing rate. Okay, betul lah. Straightforward je soalan tu kan. The higher need of uh, oxygen, the higher uh, breathing rate lah. So you need more oxygen. So you breathe more, okay? Ataupun uh, untuk point lain, you can also mention you breathe more, a rate of breathing increase because this is to release more carbon, carbon dioxide pun boleh juga, carbon dioxide released, okay? To release more carbon dioxide. And then uh, another point that you can also use, uh, ataupun answer, cell use more oxygen, okay? Cell, because cell use more oxygen, so therefore higher breathing rate. So anyhow, semua tiga point tu, requires you mentioning higher breathing rate okay higher breathing rate or increased breathing rate okay okay so thank you uh para number two nur ay nadira Yeah. Okay, tak apa awak type jawapan. Lagi satu. Okay. Awak tengok ada cara awak jawab. Yang point yang pertama, awak tulis um, your, your first point, thin cell Semua cell thin kan? Semua cell ni uh, kecil, nipis je So, thin tu dah betul Cell tu salah Thin layers okay? Thin layers the, the, the characteristics of all respiratory system Including in this question, tracheal system So, they are thin okay? Thin layers Okay, thin layers which is 
uh, most of it is one cell thick. Okay, one cell thick. Uh. So, be careful ya eh, cara awak jawab tu. So, dia akan jadi uh, apa masuk di lain. Uh, macam tu kan. So, uh, so thin layer. Okay, thin layer supposedly. Okay, thin layer. Uh, thin layer uh, and then your second point is large surface area boleh kan large surface area sebab dia apa trachea, uh, trachea and then branch into more tracheoles uh, uh, that that extend into each body cells okay so large surface area betul and then if you look at this diagram kan so the the tracheal branch into each body cells and then you have the uh, the tip of the tracheole too the tip of the tracheole is uh, filled with fluids so it must be moist okay so Large surface area, betul. Surface area and then awak boleh jawab kat situ moist, kan. So, moist uh, because at the tip of the tracheals are enclosed uh, and contain fluids. Okay, so that uh, the, the the gas can can dissolve and then diffuse. And then uh, you can also mention that yang ni. Okay, so the insect will have numerous spiracles okay uh, numerous spiracle so that the air can enter into the body of the insects okay numerous spiracle to allow air to diffuse in and then what else that you can mention or if you yang ni tak dalam nota awak tapi or you, if you see this this is air sac okay insect also have air sac so the function of the air sac is to function to to store to store air sto, storage of air okay ataupun uh, uh, storage Okay, storage of air so that uh, this is to increase volume of air okay to be uh, to be supplied to to the body cells okay ada lagi tak ha, so and then uh, point lain awak boleh cakap kat situ tracheal uh, system transport air directly to each body cell ha, so kalau tracheal system of insect ni dia dia special sikit sebab apa the tracheal tubes ni, they can extend to each body cell. So, the tracheal transport air directly to each body cell. So, that is another characteristics of the tracheal system. Okay. So, thank you, uh, Ain, Nadira. Next person. Siapa ya? Aina Nazura. See the roles of carbonic anhydrase in the process of gases exchange in human. The answer is carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of carbon dioxide reacting with water, forming carbonic acid. Hmm. Satu baru satu point. Dia nak dua point. Rose of carbonic acid. So, carbonic acid akan split jadi apa? Bicarbonate ion. Eh. And? Uh, Bicarbonate ion and also? Hydrogen ion. So, this uh, increases uh, the acidity of the blood or decreases the pH of the blood. So, itu, itu pun awak, will, awak kena letak jugalah kot basically untuk, untuk soalan ni. State the roles of carbonic anhydrase in the process of gas exchange in human. Okay. So, dia catalyzes the reaction. Dah betul dah. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction between water and also carbon, uh, carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid. Okay. Jangan full stop kat situ je to produce hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. Hydrogen ion increases uh, the acidity of the blood or decreases the pH of the blood. And the carbonic acid Sorry, bicarbonate ion, bicarbonate ion, uh, concentration also increases in the blood. Uh, okay, so, so uh, you can add that point into your answer lah. Okay, sebab dia nak dua kat sini. Ataupun, uh, kalau paling linear, jawapan awak, out of this reaction. Carbon dioxide plus water, um, uh, catalyzes by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase to produce. Bicarbonate ion, uh, start split into hydrogen ion and also uh, bicarbonate ion. Uh, so this uh, 
increases the pH ataupun increases the acidity of the blood. Okay. Okay, so uh, okay, thank you, Aina. Next, Aisha Umaira, Lur Aisha Umaira. Ahmad was involved in an accident where his diaphragm was ruptured. This resulted in inhaling difficulty. Explain why. My answer is um, the pressure in the thoracic cavity cannot be decreased when inhaling. The pressure, uh, by some of my job, the pressure, the pressure in the toilet activity cannot be decreased when inhaling. So, the thoracic cavity cannot expand, can yes, okay, so we will be lah, okay. So, ini awak kena fikir sikit. It, it, soalan ni adalah soalan applied. Okay. So, the function of the diaphragm is so that uh, when you inhale, uh, uh, it causes the thoracic cavity to uh, volume to increase, decreasing the pressure inside the lung. Tapi kalau dah rupture, so pressure inside the lung cannot be uh, cannot be decreased. So, air uh, cannot, cannot enter into the lung because the pressure inside the lung and also outside uh, will be... Um, Similar, can no partial, no difference in partial pressure, can no spa, uh, difference in partial pressure. So, dia tak boleh nak inhale lah. Okay, so those are the point that you can include in your answer. So, satu je lah, which is, kalau yang paling obvious, unable to expand thoracic cavity. Okay, unable to expand thoracic cavity or cannot increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. So, thus... Uh, the pressure inside the, the thoracic cavity cannot be decreased. Ataupun cannot um, create negative pressure breathing. So, itu pun boleh. Cannot create negative pressure breathing. So, another point that you can include. So, therefore, uh, the air pressure inside the lung and also the pressure outside, which is the atmospheric pressure, will be the same. Okay, will be equal. No difference in partial pressure between outside and inside the lungs. Okay. So, okay, uh, tadi Aisyah Humaira, banyak Aisyah ni, okay. So, next, uh, banyak ramai Aisyah, okay. Number three, uh, Nur Aisyah Nadira, 3A. Nur Aisyah Nadira kan? Ada? Mana? Kita skip Aisyah Nadira nanti kita buat uh, semula. Balik semula ke Aisyah Nadira. Nur Aisyah Sofia, number A, number 3A. Number 3A yeah. is the law of structure and in breathing mechanics. Structure M is the diaphragm. It acts as the muscular floor of the thoracic cavity. Jawab apa ni? Jawapan apa tadi? What was your answer tadi? Can you repeat? It acts as the muscular floor of the thoracic cavity. Okay. Jawapan awak tu kan? Sebenarnya dia tak berapa nak tepat sebab apa? Itu awak describe. Uh, your answer you describing. You describing what is diaphragm. The question ask you. Apa? What is the role uh, of diaphragm? During breathing. Okay. Your answer you describing. Uh, it is the muscular wall. Okay, so, it, that you describe that. Your answer is describing the diaphragm. The question asks you to describe. 
what is the role of the uh, of the diaphragm during breathing during uh, uh, breathing mechanics so macam soalan yang tadi yang yang pasal uh, Ahmad tu tadi so the function of the of the diaphragm is to expand or increase the thoracic volume during inhalation kan okay, so expand uh, the volume the volume or increase increase the volume of th thoracic cavity during during inhalation okay uh, so ataupun uh, untuk uh, kalau kalau awak choose to expand on exhalation so decrease it decreases it decreases the volume of of the thoracic cavity tu kalau exhalation so breathing breathing mechanism ni kita ada inhalation kita ada exhalation kan so apa fungsi diaphragm ni masa inhalation inhale expand the thoracic cavity kalau exhalation uh, decrease the thoracic cavity ya, macam tu lah ataupun if you choose uh, to describe in terms of pressure pun boleh kan so kalau in, during during inhalation kan during inhalation it um it causes it can cause the pressure inhalation uh, it can cause the pressure to to decrease kan uh, kan so pressure decrease during during inhalation kalau exhalation increase the pressure so you can choose lah uh, you want to explain during inhalation ataupun exhalation uh, in terms of volume ataupun pressure effects dia pada volume ataupun pressure inside the inside the lung faham eh boleh tak Okay, ha. so make sure you you look at the question carefully. Okay. Okay. Uh, ini saya cakap, you boleh lah control ataupun another way of explaining it is control uh, ataupun expand ataupun increase thoracic cavity. Okay. Yeah. So that is one of the answer that you can include. Okay. So thank you Aisha, Sofia. Aisha Nadira dah ada ke? Still no Aisha Nadira. Okay. So we move on to uh, Dania Atta. Nurdania. Um, so for B, give two characteristics of structure and the enhanced gas exchange in human. So my answer is um, moist and thin. So senang je lah kan? Ha? So any any uh, respiratory surface yang paling senang uh, jawab uh, thin, moist, large surface area kan or highly folded kan uh, the yang ini dia referring to uh, the alveolus lah. So, it is highly folded kan. So, uh, it is surrounded by blood, uh, blood capillaries pun boleh. Okay. So, those are the answers that you can include. Okay. To get the two points. Um, okay, Dania. Thank you. Number, the next question C. Farah, Nur Farah Akila. Farah ada? Okay, so next uh, Far Farha, no Farha. So I hope these people are here with us. Okay. Based on figure 5, describe how fish gills are adapted for efficient gas exchange. My answer is the gills are highly folded in which it provides large, large surface area. Besides that, the outer layer of gill filament and the capillary walls are just one cell thick. Kalau jawapan awak tu sebenarnya tak berapa nak tepat Sebab apa tau uh, Sebab Berbeza dengan soalan 
2A yang sudah disuruh bagi characteristics of tracheal system as respiratory surface tu itu ah itu boleh jawab moist in uh, so semua tu dan surface area tapi kalau tengok soalan C ni you have to be more careful sebab apa awak tengok kat sini eh? based on figure 5 disuruh awak berpandukan pada gambar okay, based on figure 5 describe how fish gills are adapted for efficient gas exchange awak kena refer awak punya jawapan tu pada diagram pada diagram ni dia tunjuk apa proses apa Gills is adapted in, in order to make sure that uh, it can extract oxygen efficiently from water. Dia akan menggunakan mekanisme apa? Proses apa? Counter current. Ha. Itu poin yang pertama. Okay, counter current exchange. Gills are adapted for efficient gas exchange based on figure 5 ni is that it involves in counter current exchange. One point. Okay. So and then when you look at the di uh, diagram ada apa lagi structure ni kan kita kalau human kita ada alveolus kan so they for fish they have lamella that is rich in blood capillaries that is another point that you can include okay and then the third point point yang lain awak boleh jawab adalah awak, you explain on the counter current exchange tu where it involves water and blood to flow in opposite direction okay water and blood to flow in opposite direction another point that you can also include in your uh, in answer in your answer okay so describe lagi process counter current tu dalam uh, in in uh, in fish gills apa every time when when a uh, water passes the blood what happen the the blood encounters water with higher oxygen concentration okay to so, ataupun water contains higher oxygen concentration compared to the Uh, to the to the blood. Ha, so so I'll describe lah counter current sikit. Okay. So boleh eh? Boleh madam. Okay. So make sure again kan bila kita buat soalan latihan ni you you must look at the question carefully what does the question wants. Macam tadi role tu tadi kan. Instead of instead of you giving role you you describe diaphragm. So you, careful, you have to carefully look at the question. Okay. Okay, so Farha, thank you. Uh, number four, uh, Nur Idina. Give one example of organism in which gas exchange occurs as, de as described below. One, in gills located outside of the body, exolotter. Two, through tiny airways, parabronchial bed. Okay, so boleh eh? So kalau kita tengok yang uh, soalan soalan A ni gills located outside of the body awak bagi uh, uh, tadi axillary. So make sure kalau nak jawab axillary tu axillary lah dia betul-betul kan. Okay. Uh, ataupun starfish kalau kita tengok dalam awak punya slide tu kan dia ada macam bulu-bulu kat luar dia tu. So that is the gills of the of the starfish. Ataupun larva of many fish ataupun larva of many uh, amphibians ataupun crayfish kan so those are examples of uh, 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 organism that has gills outside of the body which is dia adalah external gills okay so external gills is more fragile compared to the internal gills because the external gills is not protected by body structure it is exposed and uh, because it is exposed also uh, the this organism that uh, that has uh, external uh, external gills they have to constantly move so that the gills uh, ada pergerakan air kan uh, there's movement of water between the lamella of the gills so okay uh, so so this organism has to constantly move so that the gas exchange can occur okay so uh, so that is on the external gills lah so kalau birds through through tiny air vessels called parabronchi so parabronchi the arrangement of blood vessels dengan parabronchi tu is cross current. Kalau yang ini ini counter current kan? Kalau bird is cross current. Okay, cross current. Um, and then birds yang awak kita yang awak kena tahu kita terus buat revision kan? So, kalau birds they use two cycle breathing process kan sebab dia ada apa? Dia ada uh, posterior air sac, dia ada anterior air sac. In between you have the lungs. Okay, so and also it, it uses 
uh, unidirectional air flow. So maksudnya uh, udara masuk melalui trachea, store dulu dalam uh, posterior uh, air sac and then for anterior it stores stale, uh, stale air from the from the lungs. So that is inhalation lah. Ada dua inhalation by the posterior by the anterior. Okay. Then kalau exhalation pun ada dua. So bila exhalation so both this uh, air sac will deplete and the, uh, the air from the posterior akan masuk dalam lung the stale air from the anterior akan keluar melalui trachea so unidirectional lah uh, so two cycle breathing process and unidirectional okay para bronchi dia melibatkan cross current okay cross current okay so tu poin-poin yang kena ingat lah untuk yang buat okay so thank you tadi uh, siapa tadi Idina eh so next Is Munira. Figure 6 shows the human respiratory system identified as NT. S is trachea and T is bronchus. Okay, bronchus ataupun bronchios. Okay, bronchus, bronchi, uh, bronchios. Eh, bronchi, sorry. Bronchi, sebab dia yang, yang besar. Okay, so um, straightforward. Uh, okay, so next, Sufia. Name the name structure that helps maintain S and T. Uh, my answer is cartilage. Cartilage. Kenapa, uh, why is it significant that the trachea, your airways, has to made up of trachea? Uh, so, uh, sorry, tra uh, cartilage. Uh, no. The cartilage reinforces the walls of the trachea and bronchus. Reinforces in terms of making sure what? Making sure that the airways is always keep open. Can they not collapse? Can so berbanding dengan esophagus kat belakang dia, it is all made up of muscle. Okay, so this is to keep the airways uh, to to always open lah. Sama juga dengan trachea system in uh, in inside. It is made up of chitin. Okay. Uh, Sofia, awak ada dua device eh? Ha, ha. Kenapa eh? Uh, sebab mic. Okay. Alright. So, eh, tak apa. Okay je mana mana. Okay. So, kalau perlu, kalau perlu dua, oh, tak apa. It's okay. 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 Uh, next is Shakira. Uh, figure 7 shows a series of events involved in breathing named Y. High carbon dioxide detected by Y in pulses center to the respiratory center and inhalation. Uh, my answer is medulla oblongata. Why to medulla oblongata? Mm, yes. Sure. Ini adalah senses. Senses to detect the change in carbon dioxide uh, concentration. Medulla oblongata in the brain already to, to interpret. Ini stimulus. Stimulus tak boleh terus pergi ke brain kan? Oh yes. Ha. The stimulus is high concentration of oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide detected by the sensor. The sensor is why? Apa dia? Carotid artery. Carotid artery ada apa? Strat sensor dia tu. Not sure. Kita dah tengok tadi ada soalan yang previous tadi. Saya tak ingat siapa yang buat tadi. Dia mula dengan C. Ha, peripheral chemo receptor. Okay. So why is the to be more specific it is peripheral chemo receptor sebab dia detect carbon dioxide. Okay. Tapi kalau you answer chemo receptor 
pun boleh. Tapi kalau awak jawab central chemoreceptor terus, dia jadi salah. Sebab apa? Central chemoreceptor hanya detect hydrogen ion concentration. So, ada dua chemoreceptor, peripheral and also central. Peripheral detect both carbon dioxide and also hydrogen. So, in this case, dia adalah peripheral chemoreceptor. Tapi awak jawab chemoreceptor sahaja diterima juga. Okay. So, so the, the chemoreceptor detect the change in carbon dioxide concentration which is high and then send the information in the form of impulse to your brain. Ha, barulah dekat respiratory center. Respiratory center is in the brain. To be specific, it is the ob, uh, medulla oblongata. Okay. Medulla oblongata uh, ataupun uh, dalam tu ada respiratory, uh, dikenali juga sebagai respiratory center. Okay. Respiratory center ataupun uh, ada lagi satu istilah sekejap eh. Ni. Breathing control center. Okay. Medulla oblongata. So this is uh, to interpret lah what is the corrective mechanism lah to be carried out to increase uh, the, the rate of breathing ke ha, contohnya. Okay. So inhalation lah. So so when carbon dioxide increase, so the punya respon dia apa? Increase depth. Okay. Increase depth and also Uh, rate of breathing. Okay, huh? so that is the response. Increase inhalation. Okay. So, uh, next. Tadi siapa Shakira? Yasmin. D. State one effect of cigarette smoke to the respiration system. Toxic substances from the smoke inhaled paralyze the cilia lining in the trachea and bronchi, preventing removal of inhaled particles. Okay, betul. Okay, so that is the effects of cigarette smoke. They paralyze the cilia lining in the trachea and also bronchi, preventing uh, removal of inhaled uh, particles. Uh, kalau awak jawab, uh, lead to lung cancer pun diterima. Yeah, lead, uh, it can lead to lung cancer. is also accepted. Okay. Okay, number five. Uh, Fatiha. Nur Fatiha. 5A. Putus tapi I, uh, I got your answer. Okay, so semua tu ada dalam awak punya, apa semuanya. Maksudnya your answer is correct lah. You, you have all the points. Okay, cumanya kalau untuk fish tu, you can also add yang macam tadi kan. Uh, you didn't mention on counter current. Awak ada mention on counter current tak? Tak kena So you can add also in your answer. Okay, so kalau fish, I, I repeat eh untuk yang, uh, untuk Fatiha sebab tadi dia, uh, dia terputus tu putus tak berapa nak clear. Okay, so kalau fish, the point that you can include in your answer is uh, the fish will have uh, gills or uh, the gills are composed of many lamilla which is, uh, uh, it is, uh, the gills are full of tiny blood vessels, kan? Setiap lamilla tu ada tiny blood vessels and then, uh, the, uh, so because they have the lamilla, so this increases the, the respiratory surface of the gills and then uh, it uses counter current exchange Okay, between water and also the the blood that flows inside the gills. Uh, sorry, inside the blood vessels in the gills. So, counter current exchange occurs. Okay, so kalau insect, tadi pun ah, betul dah jawapan awak. So, for insect, they use a uh, tracheal system. Okay, tracheal system or trachea or tracheal tube pun boleh juga. And then, uh, the tube branches throughout the body from the spherical. So, the spherical, it, it allows uh, the air to enter into the body of the insects. Okay. And then at the end, the, the end of the tips of the uh, of the uh, 
tracheoles too, it is filled with fluids. It contains fluids, okay, fluids to allow uh, respiratory gas to dissolve before it diffuse, okay. And then, I pull out here. Okay, so those are the answer that you can include in your, in your, in your points, okay. So, B, uh, Nuri Nadra. B1, please. Ada Nurin. Nuru is that too, please? Um, for insect, uh, air enters the tracheal tube to Insect dah. Insect dah. Kita dah dah cover tadi. Uh, fish dengan insect. Oh, ya ke? Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, B1, based on figure A, explain the effect of black pH on oxygen affinity of hemoglobin. So, my answer is the O2 will act with water forming carbonic acid and lower the pH. Then, the affinity of hemoglobin for O2, uh, O2 decrease. So when CO2 production is greater, hemoglobin will release more oxygen. Tambah lagi point. So release more oxygen kat 7.2 dia akan menyebabkan apa? Graph tu apa? Um, got decrease. The graph shift to the right. Right. Uh, graph shift to the right. Okay, okay so uh, uh, suara saya echo eh. Okay, so the uh, so the disso the dissociation curve move to the right or it leads to more uh, more shift. Okay, more shift. So, itu jawapan dia lah kan. So explain the effects of blood pH on oxygen affinity. So kita faham kan. So kalau seven point two, it means that the uh, blood is more acidic due to the production of more hydrogen ion. Because why? Because more carbon dioxide is produced. So this uh, decreases the affinity of hemoglobin towards Oxygen, so more oxygen will be released, and this causes the graph to shift to the right, uh, leading to a uh, poor shift. Okay, so boleh eh? So I hope you understand on this graph. Okay, so last question. Basically, for this question, kita dah cover dah sebenarnya. What is the relationship between the increased need of oxygen during exercise and breathing? Soalan tadi sama, which is it increases the breathing rate. Okay, to remove more carbon dioxide or to supply more oxygen to the respiring. So, okay. So, habis dah kita punya discussion on this chapter. So, so far do you have any question? Apa yang kita dah discuss hari ni? Siapa yang tak tertanya tu, uh, uh, you are lucky lah. Tak cukup soalan. Okay, so ada ada apa-apa nak tanya? Do you have any question?